A very good morning and a very warm welcome to all the distinguished uh, participants here who've come. It is my honor to welcome here His Excellency Mr. Bhagwan Kuba, the Minister of Renewable Energy and a new and renewable energy in chemicals and fertilizers for the government of India. We're expecting the Water Resources Minister to join us very soon. Her Excellency, Ms. Patricia Lucina, Charge d'Affaires, United States of America, a very old partner and friend in this program. My honor to welcome you, Dr. Ajay Mathur, His Excellency, the Director General of the International Solar Alliance, who's been a kind of a foundation stone for energy efficiency in India, and also has been heading the Energy Research Institute. So he's extremely distinguished to be here and to guide us. Mr. Popley, my old friend, who's been funding renewable energy for a lifetime, more or less, Dr. Anil Garg and Dr. V.K. Garg, old colleagues, as well as distinguished friends. We're meeting here today for Renewable Energy Technology Conference and the Sixth World Water Summit. At the very outset, I think, I have a thought that civilization, you see, is not possible without both these elements, energy as well as water. We've tried to piece together the various aspects of these two issues which are crucial to human existence. What is modern civilization? It tends to come up, cities tend to spring up wherever there is land available, capital available, and what follows is just concrete, glass, and maximization of profits, sorry. Maximization of profits. There is no basic survey for energy availability in that sense, your self-sufficiency, or water proximity to the project. I, having handled urban development in my state as the chief executive, and also subsequently post-retirement headed an environment committee for the government of India. I know when these projects come, where is the water? They only show land. They only show plans. And there's money. People come, live in those homes without guarantee of electricity or water. I think we've got to probably change the way we think and live. We're going back to the elements of nature, to traditional wisdom, and old civilizations never came up without availability or water, occupations, or other such things. Any old city in India is full of them. Don't we have to concentrate? Ajay has worked with me in the Ministry of Power spent a lot of time trying to develop new building norms. What, how much should energy efficiency be brought into it? Should building materials be, not be such that you generate electricity by the new technologies that is coming? Make a home as independent as you can in terms of its essential commodities. Yes, water you cannot provide. But yes, at least for energy, you decentralize their homes, of course, in developed countries today, like the US and many other countries, where they're self-sufficient, cell power, etc. So my thought to you, to the leaders of the industry here today is that I think we've got to go back to basics. Don't let civilization come up and concentrate, create problems, and then try and find solutions to those problems. And this is happening more so 
in the developing countries, in the poorer countries, where capital is hard to get, of course, employment, everything, the basics of town planning, which were there about 40, 50 years ago. I had my first working in the city of Chandigarh in the Indian Administrative Service, and I know what the planners thought at that time and how it's got disrupted today. This conference has been very carefully crafted to try and highlight various aspects. First and foremost, you need money. And particularly for any transition, for a change of technology, you change your home, you need money. That is the first criterion. The second seems to be that, yes, energy, like capital, has to be stored also. You can't produce it, use it, produce it, use it. Yes, if you can, to that extent, they said, you'll be much better off. But you've got to work on storage. Then, no civilization without water. And water is a recyclable waste. So Dr. Popley has talked about it. And these are the kind of things that we'll be working on, energy efficiency, innovation for smart water ecosystems, smart grids, because if you're throwing in so many diverse and intermittent elements, where, who is going to control that? Has to be a very active brain sitting everywhere and not mere transmitter of electrons. Now that kind of intelligent human activity has to incorporate new intelligent thinking. And unless we do that, we will not succeed. We have a huge problem of payback. Users are there, but nobody is willing to pay for it. Thinks only the person for whom I voted will go and pay for it or find a way out. So I think the time has come that no connection is to be given for an, any energy source or for water till you have a mechanism like this fellow, use and pay. Or pay as you use. If you don't do that, sorry, the supply is stopped. Because all these institutions have got into a financial mess by and large. And the end of the tunnel doesn't seem very close. In fact, the tunnel, if you ask me, having worked in both these departments, is getting darker and darker. Then, there is a lot of talk of solar. Yes, solar is the way out. And countries like India, we need a lot of solar. But developing countries, need jobs also. People are just not robots or not just voters. They need jobs. Otherwise, they will keep creating problems for governance. They'll keep looking for freebies. You have to create employment connected with that civilization. The model Part of my saying, so Patricia, the US model of driving out to work, maybe 50 kilometers, living out, driving back. They said, if you're born in the United States without four wheels, you're not born till you acquire those four wheels. Well, that solution is not available for poorer countries. Cars are getting bigger and bigger. Roads are getting more clustered, more vehicles. We say new technologies are developing, the old one is phased out. But those cars in the developing countries never get off the roads. So a highway which was supposed to take 20 minutes or 30 minutes to work for people is now taking an hour, hour and a half. And the resultant effect is environmental pollution, which we are not going to discuss here this time. But these are all related problems. 
and I think pre cr problems created by humanity itself. The energy transition that is coming will be discussed here, and the security issues basically. What about the future? We plan only for the present, by and large, or for the length of the investment. But civilization is going to stay there for long. Now, those are the long-term planning solutions which people like me in the government will have to think harder. I think the conference has a massive agenda and a galaxy of very, very eminent speakers. It will be at two venues. We had to shift one venue for two sessions because uh, another honorable minister was taking a program suddenly in one of the halls here. We regret the inconvenience to some of the participants, but I think uh, soon after the first session, uh, it, is, it is my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Minister for Water Resources, Shri Gajinder Singh Shekhawadji, a very warm welcome to him. Sir.